which obviously will help, but I mean, ultimately, it's definitely help picks that don't want the level one. They, oh, and it's also not first strike Sivir. It's going to be the fleet footwork. Yeah, just right click crit Sivir. Yeah, even the the fleet uh, the first strike also goes oh, here we crit go. Sivir, but oh, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know it's that. It's going to be the root landing flash for Abyss and flash forward here from Lava. First blood already. J Team picking that one up nice and early. Stun won't connect quite for Kiri, but once again, flying start. Yeah, can't. Can't deny away Karthus's camps, I don't think. Too long. Too long until the camp spawns, so just gonna back off. Did lose Flash, which is really scary. Yeah. Yeah, you, you hate to see it if you're the Karthus. Uh, probably had to just flash the initial Ivern route. Lava looks like he flashed to land that. Uh, is just gonna suck for his mid laner more than anything. It's not gonna affect him as long as he's not punished for not having this flash. Man, Lakai gonna walk in. Yeah. Obviously knows, because of this war, that Abyss is up here. Wasn't ever truly threatening. Yeah, not... Uh, it's not Karthus actually... Yeah, and Karthus not very weak at level 1. No, yeah. Especially in an isolated area like that. Hook lands, pretty even trade here on the bot side. Obviously, bot lane not really impacted at all by what just occurred. Yeah, so scaling, probably the hell picks, but J Team very good scaling too. As Minji's going to take a very good trade here. I think the scaling favors hell picks, dependent almost on Lava's items, because Lava can, being the Ivern, build quite a lot of I items that completely shut down Requiem almost. Yeah. You get Locket if you want. You can go for Redemption to heal up afterwards. Yeah. You have quite a lot of versatility in anti Karthus items when you are playing a champion like the Ivern. Abyss now, he's low on health, he has no flash, and he's going to run into a Lava. Rooted up, Trigger C does also proc for that slow as Lava's trying to battle down Abyss's health bar. Uh -oh. But it is going to be the Skittles no flash, landing no time and time again. Lava, though, he's trying to get himself away. There's nowhere really from to queue out. Wow. The hook from Enso. But it is going to be one kill found, and Ching Knight's going to be the benefactor of that one. Now, Abyss, he does get a lot of mana back. He has the blue buff, but he is going to be taken out as Minji flashes forward. That's the second of the game. Blue buff now on to this Tristana as Kiri tries to land that stun. It won't be able to do so. Chi Chi turning around though. This might be dangerous as Ching Nine has the red buff. Clint's going to be used to try to get rid of that slow, but it might not be enough. The auto attack reset, but not quite the damage found as it is going to be a one for one. But once again, Minji two and zero on this Tristana middle. Yeah, Cheng, Cheng Nine actually has Spell Shield on the Sivir at level 2 instead of the Boomerang. Might have changed this play. Uh, and yeah, this was very risky from Lava Ivern. Not a whole lot of damage at this point in the game, or any really. Abyss actually picks up the entire camp while he's killing Lava here. Uh, and then very theatric, theatrical escape almost from Lava lands the Q onto the Rel as she gets cooked away. Nice save from Enso, but... He's ultimately just running into the Sivir. Uh, and Minji, destroying mid lane, is able to just roam down. Commits his flash to slowing down the Karthus. If both junglers are low economy and we're fighting a lot like this, Ivern, you'd rather have the Ivern. Yeah. Ten times out of ten. Yeah, his uh, items are much cheaper. Yeah, so I, I like that Lava is invading uh, with the priority he has in his lanes and just slowing down the Karthus. Because uh, you're not going to clear nearly as fast. Even look at the camps now. Yeah, and one thing we didn't mention is before that skirmish even occurred, Lava did take away the red buff, so... Oh, okay, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. he walked in, prepped it up, smited it. He was level 2 to a level 3 Karthus, but did Holy. manage to take away one of the camps, came back to pick up what he'd already cooked up in his own jungle. Wall of Pain coming through his Abyss, tries to look for something on a Minji, no flash available, and he's landing constant... Yeah, Cues. plus one Dark Harvest, four Abyss, but minus a Flash for Nuli. Must have had his Valkyrie on cooldown. So, well played by Lava to time that gank. And everyone is in mid. Yeah, we we, we ain't ramming. Nautilus Rel. Oh, top lane is going dreadfully for... Oh yeah, I don't, I don't really know what Cassante is supposed to do in this matchup. You can kind of have a little bit of play. Uh, once you get one item, but the problem is, for that you kind of, and it was in the past as well, it was the Koenig Recurn, uh, and sort of the shield allowed you to trade and actually win the trades against Gwen at one item. 
The yeah. problem is that item's been nerfed a lot, and in this game, do you really want to go Kanic first, considering you are up against double AD carry? Yeah, I think he will still build an MR item first and then go full uh, armor, and that's going to mean that as we get to two, three, four items, Gwen is going to be a monster. I almost think he should just go first item um, Sunfire Cape and just wave clear, but... Spectre's Cal picked up, so that will not be the case. Could do something similar with Hollow Radiance. Yeah, Hollow Radiance just kind of sucks, I think. Unless so, you're playing Senna Nautilus. Yeah, or Senna Orn. Raptor's denied away by Lava. He's doing a good job of staying on top of these camp respawns, and he's got a level lead on the Karthus. Yep, definitely not the position you want to be in. But yeah. Such is it when you die level 1 as a Karthus, it's kind of hard to find your way back in, and Ivan doesn't need to be ahead. If he was a regular jungle, probably would have just found himself up 10, 20 CS, but instead just trying to slow down the Karthus. Nice stun lands, but not really much to follow up on. Yeah, just a bit out of range. Chi Chi playing far back enough. Yeah, Nully pretty ungankable. Uh, Ivern gank is never gonna really kill the Corky. Managed to get his flash last time. Yeah, both mid laners don't feel like they should really die. Maybe you could argue that Corky's a little bit more vulnerable if Enso's there to um, follow up, but he's not even level six. It's gonna be the dismount from Kiri. Gets himself out. Pierce arrow connects, but it just takes away the shield. Nothing really too drastic. Yeah, a lot of Ivern ganks are gonna look like that. He just walks up. And the enemies walk away. Must say, Abyss is very good at landing these Carthus play wastes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, rocket jump forward. Nolly taking quite a lot of damage from the satchel charge. And yeah. Half HP, definitely losing out in this lane, but kind of not to the fault of his own in many ways. Yeah, Minji just has two kills. Uh, pretty much for free. The first kill he just got off of that level one play and... Okay. Helping's fighting hard to get this wave in. It looks like they have managed it, though. Lava's here, and he's extremely fast. Oh, I, I didn't see his runes, but he must have... Does he have the... What is it? Water walker? Is that what it's called? The oh, rune? yeah, yeah. Water walking. Yeah. I believe he has that. Honestly, all of these lanes for Helpix might just be ungankable. It, Abyss might be the only person they can really... Lava can really focus on this game. Uh, because Sivir isn't going to go down to Nautilus and Ivern engages ever. Uh, I think Chang Nine would have to really mess up. Yeah, I, I think both junglers are kind of just throwing things at walls yeah. uh, to try and get a gank here. I mean, yeah, and I think that favors Karthus. That game state, as you can see, is already up a bit of CS now, recovered fully, and just full clear after full clear. Has his ulti now. Yeah, I think you'd really like to see J-Team and Lava head towards this dragon. Yeah. yeah Varus is strong, overdue. Tristana is definitely stronger than this Corky, and I think putting Karthus on a timer is probably the optimal thing to do. Although I don't think you're necessarily out of the game if Karthus does end up getting some items, because once again, Lava will just get one or two items and, and somewhat negate the Karthus yeah, more than most champs. Yeah, redemptions, lockets. I think Nautilus might go for locket, but... Yeah, it makes yeah. sense against... Uh, Karthus. Uh, and Karthus needs a lot of items before he can, you know, blast through those items. Hook yeah, onto like the items, yeah. Okay, Daisy comes out, but... Won't be anything really to do here. You are just going to want to have Daisy out for this dragon anyway, so... Not really that much oh. of a loss. Chain of Corruption, though. Ching 9. He's... Oh, is that Abyss? Sorry. He was just caught lacking a little bit there. Through will come this Requiem, but there is absolutely no damage going to be landing from that, and... Dragon was stopped, but it did come at the price of two members there, both Kiri and Abyss taken out. Yeah, and this Tristana's becoming a problem, already a problem. Kraken Slayer at nine minutes now for Minji. Uh, yeah, they're not making Nulli's life very easy this game. He has gone for the fleet footwork Triforce build, uh, which hasn't looked as strong to me as the Halo Blades version. But we'll see what he can do this game. And Helpix were trying to bait this, I guess. Uh, but I think it's actually a Q from Lava. No, it's a it's the Verisol yeah, from Chi Chi. Yeah, Chain of Corruption will yeah, land nice the here. And yeah, followed up with a hook and 
very easy kill. Scary to go for the Karthus first, but it's a 4v3. Uh, and they get the Karthus all for good Benji, measure. Big no shutdown. flash. He's getting it. Oh, the shutdown. And yeah. it's Abyss who picks it up. Yeah, big shutdown onto the Karthus. What even occurred for that to happen? Ghost popped in top side. Both top laners using that. No needlework available, so... Yeah, Ivern is there, but I don't think he brings enough damage for them to be able to dive. Not with four members of Halpings headed up and a dead mid laner. Yeah, so Void Grubs now, and I'm kind of surprised Halpings didn't just cross map these Void Grubs and trade the Dragon for them, but it works out for them somehow where they get the Void Grubs, no Dragon taken by J-Team. Uh, and Sivir's losing some CS to this tower, Okay, but the replay is minimized. I'm trying to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. He rocket jumped forward onto Nuli. Yeah, as he has been doing. And unfortunately, there were three people nearby. Yeah, good move from Kerry. I think against just the Karthus Corky, Minji's fine to do that. He's been doing it all game, and I think he gets away with it, uh, if not for Rel. Speaking of Kerry, he is not going to run down Chi Chi. Uh, Helping spot lane find themselves in a pretty good spot now where they can just shove their upper base on their opponents. So Dragon attempt number two now, it is warded, so... Yeah, and they might just have to slowly let the Ivern do this. Minji's coming down to help now. Yeah, Minji, Chi Chi and Enzo, it's four people strong, and Abyss is recalling. Hasn't recalled since getting that kill, so... Never is going to be a realistic contest here. Yeah. 12 minutes for the first dragon. A decidedly slow yeah. first dragon. Yeah, if Helping's goal was to delay the dragon, they've successfully done that. Gold, only a 1k between the two teams. And yeah, J-Team's bot lane's going to be stuck down here for a while. I think one thing you have to worry about, though, is while Karthus is going to scale very well, Gwyn is, and yeah. Karthus... Cannot really impact the side yeah. lane against Gwen. Yeah, no interaction uh, between those champs. Uh, except maybe a well timed Karth Assault while the. W has to be down, yeah. Twilight Shroud, yeah. But I, that's. Oof. Uh oh. Enso. Yeah, Enso. This might just be a quick kill. Maybe with the biggest five head play of his life. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he knew that was happening. There's no vision. Yeah, he just hex flashes over the wall and finds himself a Karthus. And Abyss will go down now for his fourth death of this game. and Yeah, the Karthus experience. Yeah, not exactly how you'd want to start it off, but you did get a 550 gold shutdown, so you're not entirely out of it just yet. Yeah. Um, but Lava's is going to make it a little bit harder for you as your blue is definitely gone. Hmm. This is worrying. Yeah, I mean, it is just a Karthus, so it's hard to stress out about him being 1-4. and four. Uh, He is just way behind in farm where you would like to be as a Karthus uh, at this point in the game. I think another point of concern, perhaps, is... I don't actually know, but at least in my head it makes sense that later on Tristana in the side lane is going to be a lot more scary than the Corky, as I do see Lalva... Get absolutely eliminated, and that's another kill onto Abyss and his Karthus. So reclaims his blue buff as Lava hanging around for much too long for that Scuttle Crab. Yeah, the good thing about the side lane, Corky versus Tristana, is if the fight is even remotely close, you have a Karthus ult. Yeah, you're right. Uh, whereas I don't think the Karthus ult makes a difference for the Gwen Cassante matchup. I don't think those fights will ever be close enough. No, and Gwyn also just has no reason to ever use the Shroud against Cassante. Yeah, so. it gives her, like, some resists, but... Yeah, I think yeah, like 20 magic resists in MR, but Cassante's going to be doing true damage anyway, so... But another kill and an objective picked up for Abyss. Uh, pretty impressive mental fortitude from a rookie. Yeah, for sure. Considering going down, you know, early in the second game and not having a great first game. Uh, yeah, he's doing perfectly fine. 100% KP. Minji waiting to see if he could catch out Nuli being a little over aggressive, but wisely Nuli does head into his jungle. He might not be aware of what is waiting for him though. And wow. flash forward, nice flash done. Kerry gonna get the knock up on the end, so are they gonna be able to take out this Nautilus? It's a nice depth charge and the chain of corruption comes through. Kerry might just be taken out. Piercing arrow takes a big chunk of health away as the Valkyrie flash from Nuli, and he does now have Guang Guang on this Cassante back to try and keep him alive. Another piercing arrow connects that time onto Ching Nine and takes away about half of his HP. Ultimately, it will just be that one death, but it was 
The aggression from Halpigs, it costs them. Yeah, engage on to the Nautilus. And first tower as well. Isn't even really close to working out, looking at Enzo's HP bar. He has an Ivern behind him too, and the Locket. Locket Redemption already complete. Yeah, that's just made Karthus' life even harder. Gwyn picking up first tower. There's an extra 600 gold in his back pocket for Lakai. And so Cassante's life is getting harder and harder. No teleport available for this Cassante now either. So Guangwan's going to have to have some phenomenal side laning here to be able to keep up with this Gwen and potentially join a fight if Lakai chooses to. Yeah, he looked very good in team fights last game uh, on the Cassante. Uh, so he, he should be okay if he can find his way into fights if Lakai does give him a chance. Yeah, Karthus kills these camps so quickly with his first item finish now. Lava will too when he's level 14. Oh yeah, is that, is that like a passive spike for... No, just like, every level you start clearing it quicker and quicker, but okay. it's very fast when you're at like 13, 14. Obviously at 18 it's pretty much instant, but... Add that to the very short list of things I know about Ivern. <laughs> and His W gives vision and bushes if you put them in it. Oh, Chain of Corruption lands that time onto Abyss. Piercing Arrow does a nice chunk of damage there onto this Karth. This is Mountain Dragon spawning, eight seconds. It's going to be some nice extra resistances for the side of J-Team if they're able to pick it up, especially against a champion like the Karthus. Yeah, I like, I, like the usage. So I like the usage of that uh, Corrupting Arrow. It's already yeah. about 30% back up. Okay, well, I'm going to charge this Herald into that mid lane tower. Definitely not going to take it out. Does go unstoppable with that Pathmaker. And it's going to be Minji walking forward, trying to find more orders on this essential oh. charge. And Nulli's getting very, very low. Massive team fight breaking out in the middle. Knock up lands onto Inso, but the redemption comes through. Everything here, all the shields and all the healing coming through means that one person goes down. But it's certainly not Inso. It's someone on the side of Halpigs as Kiri once again will find himself out of this fight. Lava still full HP and Lakai not even there. It's a 4v5 the entire time. Yeah, I think uh, Kiri misjudging the pace of that fight. It was a very slow fight. Uh, and he kind of just used everything very early on. It's going to give J-Team this Baron. Luckily, they can get back to save their Tier 2 top lane. Uh, and Minji uh, on a tear these last two games. Just takes Nuli out of the fight by himself, essentially. Uh, yeah, look, Nuli TPs in. And immediately, Minji just locks onto him. Nice unstoppable, not actually needed. But yeah, here, Minji just... Kind of kites, kites newly, dodges everything on the other side. Pretty yeah, bizarre engage from Kerry. Maybe thinks he can get multiple rather than just the Nautilus there. Yeah, it was Chi 9 using Thrill of the Hunt at the same time, but ultimately it was to the demise of his support. And yeah, yeah. it's problematic. I mean, I think the Herald Charge is also a really bad start to that fight because it did cost the W out of Cassante, you know, the, yeah. the, the Pathmaker. Yeah, and it doesn't reset anymore off ulti either. Yeah, and so the, the problem you obviously have there is it's, it's one of the best peeling tools that your team has uh, for you know the likes of Enso jumping in or even Minji who did end up just jumping in onto Nuli. So losing out on that ability is actually more costly than, than a yeah, lot than of you basic think, abilities. Yeah. No. Makai also two games of the PCS so far in summer and zero champion interaction. Yeah. He's just been side laning happily. Should be and fine. He's a man with a lot of champion interaction. No, Kerry gets hooked out. We'll be able to get out. Bit dangerous for Minji to, to fully commit as he was the only damage really in that area. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this Sivir is going to scale. This is a lot of pressure on Cheng. Uh, this game. Karthus is not going to be enough scaling by himself this game as Abyss and Lakai play a little game in this bush and yeah the tower just goes down without all that much resistance from the Helpigs. yeah tower number three picked up there three to zero it is in terms of the towers and two to zero it is in dragons Helpigs did pick up some void grubs for themselves but they never got to the four void grub threshold which is really where it becomes more meaningful yeah void grub's already gone at this point bearing up uh, both teams with very, very quick barons, so it would be interesting. Oh, Abyss hooked, and Abyss is absolutely dead. There is not much he can do about that. Yeah. Will he choose to use Requiem? Yes, he will. There is going to be a locket, though, so a little bit meaningless. 
Yeah, chunks out Minji. I think that is mostly to deter, deter a Baron attempt. Uh, we'll see if J-Team still just decide there to go for it. There is a redemption. I think they just can, right? Redemption yeah, Daisy redemption. Shielding. There is a bit of poke. Ching oh, 9, very low on mana, though, is, is one concern. Now, let's see. These bushes as well make it so scary to, to face check into. Hook does go wide. There's Kerry, though. He flashes forward. He finds the engage. It's going to oh. be a shutdown. Minji does go down first in this fight. Need to work. Trying to thwart off the attack here from Ching 9. It's a double kill. Nearly picking up for himself here. The side of Hellpigs fighting back despite the 4v5. Yeah, well played. I thought Hellpigs might just run for it once J-Team had gotten off the Baron, but they find a very nice pick onto the strongest member of J-Team, Minji, and then the fight falls apart once this Tristana goes down. Yeah, they're not going to try any funny business around the Baron themselves. They're going to be content with picking up that mid lane tower. And I think that's justifiably so. Yeah, what? I'm surprised Nuli doesn't commit. I think he's scared of a TP behind him from Lakai or Minji or both. So he leaves the top lane turret for now. And Karthus is level 11 now. What's he building? Collector, I imagine? For Nuli? Could be uh, IE, but... Probably should be IE. I think the collector ship has sailed. I hope it's just IE into rapid fire. I think that Ching 9 should build next item. What Infinity is it called? Edge? No. Uh, you'd think Infinity Edge, but I think you need Serpent's Fang. I think someone oh, should get yeah. Serpent's Fang. Yeah, I don't know who's building that. It's not Cassante. Well, it's either Corky or Sivir, but Sivir's going to apply it a lot more. Yeah, that is very true. You always just think of Sivir as just pure damage. Uh, though she does provide a lot of utility. She's very farmed up on the Sivir. Chang 9. Hook, Hook. lands. Yeah, once again. It's a Q for Q trade. Also Aftershock for Aftershock trade. Constant aggression though, Enso. Gonna blast code himself out there. Yeah. Nice to still see a little bit of Rel. I do enjoy Rao. Yeah, now that she's out of the jungle, still being picked in support. Well, Long Long getting aggressive, and he does have yeah. a health advantage, but there is a lot of healing that can come through from Gwen. Requiem coming through, but he's in the shroud. It does time it perfectly! Wow. What timing on that cast assault from a yeah. and Down will go Lakai. He's not had the best two games by any means, but boy, oh boy. Yeah, I thought that was a suicidal fight for uh, Gangwon to take, but... No, he just wins against the Gwen, apparently. Just one magic resist item, one armor item. Uh, and the Karthus ulti. Yeah, the timing on that was impeccable, though. Yeah, that was incredible. Abyss looks very good on the Karthus mechanically. Uh, even some of his Qs uh, yeah, it was after early he had gone down. Even in this game, where he got picked by the Baron, uh, it's hard to hit the isolated Qs sometimes. Or if you're me, all the time. <laughs> Things impossible to land. And Tower goes down again, so how big certainly find their way back here in yeah. game number two, but it's going to be J-Team teleporting the no Kai and Minji both. No Karthasaur. Yeah, and there is no teleport on Guangguan for a couple of seconds. He's recalling. He might be able to get here, but we're going to turn, and Kiri is absolutely annihilated. As well as now Lakai looking and finding Abyss in the back line. Both teleports coming through here for the top and mid laner in terms of helping his teams. And Sivir doing a lot of damage. Ching 9 with the ricochet. Nice spell shield. And they turn one around. Can they find more? It looks like maybe Chi Chi should be going down. He might find one himself, but not quite. Minji 1 HP in Guang Guang. He is so healthy, although all of a sudden he's lost his health as Lakai's taking it down. Minji! Minji! Oh my god! I thought he would live, he does go down, but he manages to find two before that happens. And a back and forth team fight, it's J-Team who take the win. Yeah, and honestly, it's off the back of this Gwen W once. Even after they picked up two kills on the side of Help Pigs, it looked like they were just going to run through this fight. As Karthus and Rel just go down here getting nothing. They get the Gwen ult out of them and that's about it. And then this help pig's re-engage just looked suicidal. But we said Chang 9 would have to step up on the Sivir and yeah, he did in this fight. Look at him. One man running into four people. He knows that he can fight this Varus and spell shield the hook. 
Uh, Minji making a miracle happen along with Lakai at the end here. Watch, once this Gwen pushes W, how unplayable this 3v3 is now. Uh, for Cheng and Nuli is just left isolated. And Lakai, a bit of a savior. Yeah. Constant trigger roots, just time and time again, keeping these one HP AD carries alive yeah. by a slither of HP and was enough to get Minji in there. Killed both AD carries and... Whew. Yeah, that fight looks very different with Karth Assault. Yeah, look at that damage from the Sivir. Already looking very strong. We'll see what he builds next. I kind of do just hope it's the IE. Uh, and they might just have too much damage on the side of Helpix uh, to be able to team fight them later. It's going to be Armor Pen. Okay. Most likely the Lord Dominix, but I guess in theory it could be a mortal reminder. Yeah, I don't, ha I don't hate the Armor Pen. Uh, already some armor on the Gwen. Gonna be some picked up by the Nautilus. Round three? Yeah, Hell J yeah, brother! J-Team are insisting on this Baron. Round three. No teleports available. Gong Gong and Nuli both using him in the last engagement. And Enso just menacingly standing it's out dead. here once again. This Ivan makes it so difficult to walk in. Hook lands and Enso just backs off as it's free. Baron for them, and it's going to be Abyss going down. He flashes into the middle of them, almost suicidal, trying to get into an optimal place for his death passive. Does find a Requiem. It's not going to do all that much damage. It pops a shield, and it gets a Zonia's Vilakai. He found the perfect angle, and he lives it all. Five men down and five men up as J-Team take the Baron and the clean ace afterwards to try and march on for their first series win here in summer. Yes, yeah, slivers of HP on some of these J team members, but it ends up being a five for nothing ace somehow. Baron dead before the fight even starts. Hellpig's looking a little bit lost, uh, even in the team fight itself. I don't know how Cheng9 found himself in the middle of the entirety of J team. It's just going to be an in for now. No end for J team, but three dragons, Baron. Oh, oh. oh carry not. That's a little scary. Yeah, not able to interrupt the recall. IE Rapid Fire coming through for Corky. Okay, Lord Dom's now finished here for Ching Nine, so Sivir's damage has just increased a lot. Yeah, he needs an IE on the Sivir, though. I don't think he's even building one. He's got a longsword. Also, I, I think if you're going Armor Pen third, you probably should go Mortal Reminder so Karthus doesn't have to build an Oblivion Orb. Yeah. I, I, your solo AP and you're forcing them to be the heal, heal reduction it feels yeah, it doesn't really feel great. bad. Yeah. Also, we've got a Warmog's first item for carry. That's interesting. Uh, considering that guy has been going one direction strictly. Yeah, you're not getting a whole lot of use of the passive. I assume he has the health for the passive. Yeah, I hope so. Because the only uh, usually yeah. Warmox first isn't enough. Yeah, health, usually it doesn't work. Yeah, maybe his overgrowth and that's giving him enough. Yeah, he's got a ruby crystal as well, so any other HP will get him across the line. J Team cleaning up these outer turrets again. Massive top wave crashing into the Helpigs, so Nully has to go deal with that. Minji just feels like he Anubis can... just lost half his HP for walking too close yeah. to a tower. Uh, Guang Wang as well, loses a lot. Chain of Corruption does go wide. Lakai though pops the ghost and just runs on in there. Minji trying to go forward, trying to find autos onto Ching Nine. Won't be able to do so. Lakai oh, though just wow. jumps forward and eliminates Nuli. Nice needle work onto Ching Nine. He flashes away. He's trying to get away, but it's going to be the dredge line. And that ultimate coming through that does end up finishing him off. Guang Guang delivers another bout of damage onto his back line as he does take that, what is it, satchel away with him. Requiem comes down, but. It's all too little too late, and so won't connect there onto that dredge line. Doesn't have the depth charge, of course, and Guang Guang carrying a burst. They have it all to do, but will they be able to do it? It's a path maker, it's a nice knock up, it's a nice all out, but it's going to be Guang Guang who loses his life as Lakai stands strong, stands up, and he's able to get through this fight yet again. Game number two to J Team and series one of the summer split, likely to J Team two. Yeah, you couldn't really ask for a better start to the split if you're J Team. They go sure. against Hellpix, who might be one of our weaker teams, admittedly. Well, we don't really know. We don't know yet.
But they are a brand new roster on the on the pigs. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly how you want to look on on J team. Same roster and the players we're expecting to step up are stepping up. Minji especially. Yeah. Hard I think Lalva them. very quiet. I, he had a couple of really good team fights. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. both games kind of invisible for. Yeah. Twenty five minutes. Uh, Lakai. Oh, Lakai. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Lava. No, nah, Lakai. I mean, Lava did fine. Lava did good, honestly. Yeah, especially second game. Gifts, but... Especially second game. Yeah. Even the first game, he was just bullying the Graves on yeah. Sejuani. Yeah. The first out of game was absurd. Uh, the second game, he. I think played how you'd want to, except yeah. there are a couple of times where he probably went a little too far. The, the, the time in the top side, gets the blue buff, stays around too long for the scuttle, and ends up giving over a kill to, to Karthus, who you'd already set behind. Never feels all that good. Yeah. Uh, a bit of overaggression from Minji as well, giving over that uh, extra shutdown when he had no vision on where either Kiri or Abyss were. Again, something you don't want to do. And while they got away with it this game, they're, they're not going to get away with it against teams like PSG and, and, yeah. and CFO, who are who you want to be comparing yourself against, right? Because you want to go to Worlds, you have to compare against what people think and what I think is justified to think is the two best teams in, in our region. Uh, you have to be playing a little bit cleaner. First game of the, se uh, the season, though, you can't be too upset about Yeah, it. shake the rust off and, you know, what better way to do it yeah. with a Penta game one and... Shaking the rust off of a win is always optimal. <laughs> <laughs>